Hi everyone, just thought I would touch on the Canada Pension Plan versus an Alberta Pension Plan here again a little bit quickly because of course time has gone by, we've had some questions and hopefully now I can get into answering and addressing some of the concerns that people have had. One of the biggest concerns people have had is what happens to people already drawing on their Canada Pension Plan? Well, nothing changes. So the short answer there is that the Alberta Pension Plan would have to provide the same level of service benefits as a Canada Pension Plan and assets that would move from the Canada Pension Plan into an Alberta Pension Plan would mean that if you are currently drawing a Canada Pension Plan, well then your level of service at a minimum will not change as the Alberta Pension Plan has to provide a, and this is legal by the way, it is in the act. In order to do this, they would have to transfer the assets and set up a structure in such a way that your benefits um, at a minimum, you will get what you are getting now, okay? So there's no concern on that front if you are drawing a Canada Pension Plan and living in Alberta. Now, people are also talking about one of their concerns, what if they work in different areas? Well, if you live in Quebec today, or you're a Canadian and you move overseas and um, then start living internationally, there are ways, obviously, that you are going to receive your pension. Um, it is a little bit complicated. It is paperwork, but you have to do that regardless now. Um, and so nothing there again changes. So there's nothing on that front that is of a concern if you're moving from province to province. Um, you just have to work out the calculations to find out what you would be contributing and what you would receive from one pension vice another pension. If you're moving internationally, again, same thing. The Canada Pension Plan can be moved. All that is a little bit of a complicated formula. It requires some paperwork to be completed, but none of it changes because it's an Alberta pension plan and not the CPP. So those were a couple of the questions that came up. Um, I was very clear, I think, in previous videos that stated there, I personally believe there is absolutely very little risk to Alberta in establishing an Alberta pension plan and a tremendous number of benefits for Albertans to do this. Some of the benefits obviously are, I think we can have better benefits or we can have lower contributions and, or we could have both, right? You could do a little bit greater benefit, you know, lower the contributions or you can significantly lower contributions or keep the contributions exactly the same, which just means that Albertans would have the opportunity to have receive much more in benefits. Um, because Alberta is such a young province demographically and it is such a wealthy province demographically we are probably one of the best options as far as a province goes to establish an Alberta pension plan and the reason being is because we have been over contributing to the CPP and subsidizing the rest of Canada for those two reasons we are such a young population um, so we have people that are paying in with much higher salaries and incomes to CPP and we have much fewer people drawing on the CPP. So for the next probably two, three decades in particular, Alberta will remain in that situation. And for that reason alone, um, there is again, very little risk, if any, to Alberta in setting up its own pension plan. Other people had some concerns about how it would be managed. This one is important. And it's very important to note that it does need to be managed with protections in place, similar to that of the CPP, in which I believe it needs to be an independent investment board. Um, the CPP IB only became an independent investment board in the 1990s. Um, when things were amended and changed to give them independence and to allow them to invest as opposed to a pay-as-you-go program. So that would have to be, um, again, and I think legally, because the CPP and the APP um, in the Act it does state that would have to be similar or same. So I would assume, and again, we make no assumptions, we'd want to make sure that that was indeed the case but you would want to make sure that you had an independent board that were able to assume the responsibility of the investments and making those decisions. You certainly do not want that 
as a you know a government slush fund, which would be highly unlikely that that would be the case. Uh, Canada Pension Plan is not that legally. I do believe that Alberta would have to structure it in a similar or same way. So that again is not a reason to not vote for the Alberta Pension Plan. And um, the other really significant advantage to this is even though the Canada Pension Plan Investment Board, CPPIB, even though they are independent, there are still federal regulations that are having to be taken into consideration, namely DEI, your diversity, equity, and inclusion, and your ESG, all around governments, uh, governance and social programs and climate change. And of course, then you also have to take into account politically how much of a challenge it has been for Ottawa to have any kind of rational, reasonable conversation with Ottawa, period. So for those reasons alone, politically, um, in my opinion, as a chartered investment manager, if you are going to be making investments, take the emotion out and you invest based upon risk and return. You should not be considering ESG and diversity, equity, and inclusion. They don't belong in investing, in my opinion. And so for those reasons alone, and then of course the political leverage by removing this from Ottawa's hands, I think will help to reestablish a balanced approach when it comes time to talking to Ottawa about future um, events and activities. And we've already seen with now the methane emissions that uh, Stephen Jabot is yet again you know, just shoving it down Alberta's throat without any consultation, we need to reestablish uh, some leverage and we need to reestablish a proper relationship with Ottawa and that is not going to happen under this current government. And unfortunately, we are not getting rid of the Liberal government. Even if we put in another Conservative government the next time around, they're there for two terms and then we're back to a Liberal government again. Um, there's no guarantee that the Conservatives are going to be any better. but. The reality is at some point again, we will have another liberal government and we're looking at the exact same relationship um, between Ottawa and Alberta. So it's time for that relationship to change. So I think the Alberta pension plan is a really good first step for that regardless. Um, so we have some legal reasons. Uh, we had some technical reasons. And uh, again, for those people who are concerned, you know, there's some people who say, why can't we reform the CPP? Again, we just keep having um, all these policies just rammed down Albertans' throats. And there is no conversation, there is no dialogue, there is no rational um, way forward for Alberta. So unfortunately, I think it is time to put some distance between Ottawa and Alberta for Alberta to take back whatever provincial jurisdiction that it has and to reestablish a better working relationship, again, by drawing the line in the sand saying, this is yours, this is ours, we will take care of what we can, it's ours to manage, and we will do so. So I think that's really important to note. Uh, lots of people have been talking about the economic reasons, but not a lot of people have been talking about the political reasons to do it. And I think the political reasons to do it are just as important right now. Um, as the um, economic reasons. And also, if you're thinking about the politics of it all, here's another really important factor. Now that we have actually put this out there, we have stated we are gonna have a referendum. I think it is extremely important that Alberta follow through with this, but we have to win. We have to vote for an Alberta pension plan. And the only reason I say that is because now that we've put it out there, if we have a referendum on this and Albertans are not united, we do not stand together in our strength. And I'll tell you, Canada knows, the federal government knows that Alberta can do this and can do it better than what they are currently getting from the Canada pension plan. I can 100% assure you of that. And if we do not take advantage of this opportunity, El Alberta is not going to get another one. Ottawa will play this and it will be to our disadvantage to the end of time. They will know that Albertans are never, ever, ever gonna do anything 
um, that will impact the Ottawa federal government. And I think that ruins every chance that Albertans have for better leverage, better negotiations, and for a better Alberta, period. So I think politically, it is so critically important now that we have started this to make sure that we follow it through with a yes vote for the Alberta Pension Plan. You know, whether or not we get $334 billion or we don't, um, absolutely, I think a little bit irrelevant. Obviously, we want to get as much out of this as we possibly can. The formula that was used is 100% completely rational and reasonable. Some people are arguing it's about the percentage of the population. This has nothing to do with population. This has to do with how much that Alberta has contributed, less their proportionate expenses, less the proportionate amount that they have paid out in benefits. That is completely fair. So don't give me this is not fair to the rest of Canada. Well, Ottawa should have thought about that before they have treated Alberta the way that they have. Um, a lot of these numbers that um, the report was based upon are coming from actuaries. And so people are questioning the numbers themselves. But I'll tell you, actuaries are incredibly accurate and well-informed about the data that they use. And the reason being is because so much hinges on it. And I can assure you again, CPP was put into place at age 65 because they knew, the government knew, that it would be to the benefit of the government and not to your benefit. So I'm gonna leave it there tonight, but um, just again, some more thoughts and reasons. Um, we are gonna be going uh, with the Alberta Prosperity Project, APP, and we're going to be talking about CPP here in the new year and answering people's questions in more detail. So if you do have questions, please, by all means, keep an eye out on the Alberta Prosperity Project website for dates and times where we may be in your community. I have been asked to, to be one of the guest speakers, and I have happily um, agreed to do so. So on that note, have a great night. Again, as you can still see, I'm here in Labrador and forgive me, videos take forever to upload here. Um, but uh, click the notification, make sure you are getting my videos. Do share, do like, and again, if you have comments, if you have questions, please do put them in the comment field and I have been reading them. Hopefully we can address more and get into more details here as necessary. God bless, have a great night.